Entire galaxies fight to the death. It's a slaughter. It's a massacre. Only the strongest survive. If a galaxy wants to stay alive, it has to feed on other galaxies. Our own galaxy also fights for survival. These battles are how galaxies live, grow, and die. These collisions got us to where we are today, and they're going to determine the future of the universe. In 2018, astronomers used the Gaia Space Telescope to map our Milky Way galaxy. They tracked the movements of a billion stars, and they found that some behave very strangely. Most stars of the Milky Way are orbiting in a sort of regular pattern, but these stars at the center, they're in these highly elongated orbits. Coming in from very far, swinging around the center of our galaxy and then going back out again. It's a little bit like a comet does. This group of stars plunges wildly through the center of our galaxy. When you track their direction and speed on a chart, you get a shape that looks a bit like a sausage. What sent so many stars on such a strange path? It must have been a huge event. We think these stars are the result of a past cosmic collision. They don't move like stars in the Milky Way because they're not from the Milky Way. These stars are actually alien stars. They're invaders from outer, outer space. But somehow, rather than destroy our galaxy, these attacks helped transform the Milky Way into a thing of beauty. The beautiful and serene spiral arms hide a history of conflict. Nearly 10 billion years ago, the sausage stars were part of a foreign galaxy. It was on a collision course with our home, the Milky Way. We call this invading army the Sausage Galaxy, or Gaia Enceladus. Gaia Enceladus was a tough opponent, but the Milky Way was 20 times its mass, and that makes a huge difference. When galaxies interact with each other, size definitely matters. The bigger galaxies are gonna dominate over the smaller ones, ripping them apart and essentially consuming them. Each galaxy contains billions of stars and planets, and a supermassive black hole, millions of times the mass of the sun. That's a lot of gravitational firepower. As these galaxies approach each other, you can get tidal effects. The same way that the moon can raise tides on one side of the Earth and the opposite side, one galaxy can stretch another galaxy along a certain direction. As Gaia Enceladus advanced towards us, our galaxy's superior gravity grabbed hold of the smaller galaxy. As it approached, the gravity from the Milky Way would have stretched it out. The Milky Way's gravitational power ripped Gaia and Enceladus apart and captured billions of its stars. Eventually, most of those stars would have then settled down into the disk of the Milky Way and become a part of it. Despite winning the battle, the Milky Way suffered serious damage. The collision with the Sausage Galaxy left a scar on the Milky Way. And when we look near the center of our galaxy, we see a bulge that's left over from that collision. The Milky Way isn't the only galaxy scarred by war. Across the universe, rival armies made up of billions of stars slug it out, leaving behind distorted and damaged casualties of war. There are things like Art Medora 2026, where you see this eerie glowing face, two big eyes looking right at you from across the universe. There are galaxies that look like they might have collided with one another and blown holes through each other. These battle scars give us important clues about one of the biggest mysteries in astronomy, 
how galaxies develop and grow. Our local neighborhood of galaxies has three major galaxies, but up to 50 smaller ones. All these galaxies are potential troublemakers. Each one of these could be armies that rise up against us. The two most famous galaxies that orbit the Milky Way are the Large and Small Magellanic Clouds. These are two independent dwarf galaxies that you can see in the night sky from the Southern Hemisphere. We thought the Large Magellanic Cloud orbited our galaxy at a safe distance of 160,000 light years. We thought it would stay that way, and we thought it was harmless. Now, a new discovery shows we were wrong on all counts. The new factor that changed our view of the Magellanic Cloud is we found out it has a lot more dark matter than we thought. Dark matter, the most mysterious stuff in the universe. Uh, dark matter is literally what it sounds like. It's matter that we cannot see, but it has gravity and can affect objects that we can see. Adding in this extra dark matter makes the Large Magellanic Cloud at least twice as massive as predicted. So its gravity is double what we thought. So it's not just going to orbit us, it's going to collide with the Milky Way. Moving at nearly a million miles an hour, the Large Magellanic Cloud will not swing past us. It will attack. In about two and a half billion years, it will smash into our galaxy. It's gonna plow through the disk of the Milky Way. It's gonna blow a cavity. It might even damage our spiral arms. Earth sits in one of those spiral arms. Could our planet become collateral damage? The gravitational clash between the invader and the Milky Way could hurl stars and planets out of our galaxy. Earth could be one of them. Our planet's very close to its own star, so the odds are that you'll just get ripped out along with your star. So we'd be moving along with the sun even as the sun gets jettisoned from our galaxy. Our view of the night sky would radically change. We'd be able to see much more of the Milky Way, especially if we got kicked up above the plane of the galaxy. We'd be able to see the whole shebang. Just look at any image of a spiral galaxy. They're gorgeous. Now imagine seeing your night sky filled with the face on spiral galaxy. <laughs> that would be like waking up to my face every morning. Spectacular. <laughs> If we were unlucky, our home planet could have a close encounter with an invading star. The odds are very low that another star will pass close by the sun. But those odds aren't zero. It could happen that another star passes close enough to affect the planets. Where the Earth could end up, it might find its way into the sun. You just don't know. Or there might just be a rain of comets into our inner solar system. Our own planet might be flung out, in which case this would be a death knell for all life on Earth. I'm not someone who's like a doom and gloom person, but like that would be insane. You don't know what's gonna happen, but most of the options are bad. The Milky Way galaxy is bigger than the Large Magellanic Cloud, so we are gonna win, but it's gonna hurt us for a long time. For billions of years, the Milky Way conquered galaxy after galaxy, tearing its smaller rivals to pieces. But our galaxy is about to meet its match. In the not too distant future, galactically speaking, a much, much larger battle is due for the Milky Way. A battle with a local superpower, the Andromeda Galaxy. We thought this huge galaxy might wound us in the future, 
We've known for a long time that Andromeda is heading more or less toward us, but we didn't know exactly in what direction. But in recent years, we've been able to pinpoint this a lot better. And uh, yeah, it's, it's heading right for us. Data from the Hubble Space Telescope shows the two galaxies will collide in about four billion years. And it will be a monumental battle. This collision that is coming, and it is coming, is not gonna be anything like the Milky Way has experienced before in its 10 or 12 billion year history. This is a galaxy of comparable size. This is two heavyweight prize fighters coming at it. Warriors with the same gravitational firepower. Simulations suggest a clash of the titans. Each of them with half a trillion stars in them. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty spectacular collision. Fights between equally matched galaxies are rare and messy. When the battle kicks off, there will be no good news for either side. When the Andromeda Galaxy and the Milky Way Galaxy start to get close, they're gonna start affecting each other profoundly. Tendrils of stars are gonna be thrown out. Gas is gonna be thrown out. It won't be a single impact. The first pass is actually not a direct hit. They're gonna swing past each other, in fact. And at this point, their gravitational interaction is gonna slow them down, and they're gonna come back toward each other. The galaxies will collide and fly apart again, inflicting more and more damage with each clash. If you were to go outside and look up, you could see the disk of our galaxy getting ripped apart by tidal interactions with Andromeda. The two beautiful spiral galaxies will tear each other apart, leaving one vast elliptical galaxy. The fate of the Andromeda Milky Way battle is that they will merge. This is going to be one gigantic galaxy. And that presents a problem. What are we gonna call this new galaxy? Of course, my nerd colleagues have come up with names like Milkometer, Andromeda Way, whatever, those are corny. We should just call it Hakeem. With a trillion stars, it will be one of the biggest galaxies in the universe. In the Hakeem galaxy, things are gonna be completely new. First off, it's gonna be a really good looking galaxy. Let's get that straight from the get go. Second, it's gonna be powerful. And I'm talking powerful. This may be the most remarkable galaxy in the history of the universe. Milkometer, or Hakim, if you prefer, will become the undisputed boss of our cosmic neighborhood. Its calm appearance concealing a history of violence. Cosmic wars are vicious. They destroy many galaxies. But violent conflicts can also give galaxies new life. Case in point, Galaxy NGC 4485. NGC 4485 has a nickname of the Two-Face Galaxy, like the Batman villain, because it has two different halves of the galaxy doing completely different things. Half of the galaxy is sort of old and calm and relatively quiescent, whereas half of it appears to be undergoing a sort of fireworks display of new star formation. Why are new stars only born in one half of this galaxy? We found a clue on the edge of a photo taken by the Hubble Space Telescope. It was evidence of an attack by another galaxy. We think that another galaxy passed through it just off center in a way that strongly perturbed the gas on one half of the galaxy. The two-phase galaxy's skirmish gave it a gravitational jolt, forcing clouds of gas together. When two galaxies collide, the gravitational duel can trigger a huge burst of star formation. And when gas clouds collide, they compress. And when they compress, 
you get knots in them that can compress more and form stars. So you can think of these collisions as very violent events, but ultimately it can breathe new life into a galaxy. But the spoils of war don't last long. In the short term, the Victor galaxy can come out glorious with, with so many new stars. But this celebration is short-lived because that round of star formation quickly uses up the material available. If a galaxy wants to stay alive, it has to feed on other galaxies. So galaxies constantly need to raid new targets. And that raises an important question. What happens if there's a galaxy just alone in space, nothing else is colliding with it, sort of a, a pacifist galaxy? The poster child for these peace-loving galaxies is NGC 1277. It basically hasn't formed new stars in the last 10 billion years, so it's kind of the veteran's home of galaxies. NGC 1277 lives in a rough part of the cosmos called the Perseus Cluster. Thousands of other galaxies surround NGC 1277, and they are all ready for a fight. So you might ask, why hasn't it had encounters with other galaxies that might rejuvenate it? The answer, once again, is gravity. NGC 1277 sits inside this massive galaxy cluster that has a ton of mass. And if you look at its position, it's fairly near the center of the cluster. The combined gravity of thousands of galaxies pulls on NGC 1277, accelerating it to two million miles an hour. And so it has spent the last few billion years traveling faster and faster until now it's almost at its fastest pace. NGC 1277 has no chance of grabbing new gas to make new stars. It's dying. All it has left are old red stars. When it comes to galaxies, red is dead. No new stars means no big stars, no blue stars, just small, dim red dwarfs. Galaxies that don't fight just fade away. And at that point, the history of the universe becomes really kind of boring. All the stars will simply start to die out. Eventually, there will be the last star formed in the Milky Way, with no new galaxy bringing fresh material. Without galaxy collisions, the universe dies. Galactic battles mix things up and replenish gas supplies. And our own galaxy, has reaped the benefits. Clashes with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy occurred at the same time the Sun formed. It's possible that we owe our very existence to the collision with the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Maybe the gas that ultimately gave rise to the birth of our solar system once came from another galaxy entirely. So galactic wars are both creative and destructive. These collisions got us to where we are today, and they're gonna determine the future of all the universe.